Maimonides, who wrote his books in the uh, 12th, 13th century, said there would, be, there would come a time when the young people of Israel will fight for their independence and as martyrs. We saw it happening in 1948 and later in 1967 and so on. Until this day, we're still fighting. This, of course, is part of the story of the struggle of the Jews for statehood. And this story is a turning point. It's an exceptional story. The story of Moshe Barzani and Mayor Feinstein are two separate stories which are not connected. They were active in 1946, which was a difficult year. It was after World War II and the Holocaust. It was a period of tension between the British and the underground. Moshe Barzani intended to assassinate the commander of the British forces here in Jerusalem. He was caught with a hand grenade, and after he was interrogated and tried, he was brought here to the death cell. And Mayor Feinstein took part in an Etzel operation to blow up the Jerusalem train station. This was during the Great Jewish Revolt, when the three undergrounds operated together against the British. While in jail, a friend outside smuggled messages to them in all sorts of ways. They sent them a message. Do you want to take part in Operation Samson? meaning die among the Philistines. That means hurt the British when the British come to execute them and commit suicide. I felt that they saw themselves as martyrs. And uh, their story would help their comrades to go on with the uh, war against the British. The state of Israel was erected almost exactly a year later, after they took their life. Yom HaZikaron is also one day later than the day that they took their lives. On the night of the executions, Rabbi Yaakov Goldman arrived. My father, at the time we are speaking about was the uh, rabbi of all the prisons in Israel at the time Palestine. In his account, he said, I didn't know what to say to two young men right before their death. He had a prayer in his heart. He said, God, I cannot save them. It's not in my power. But that he said in his heart, give me the word where I can take from them the fear of death. My father said, if you have any messages to your family, please let me know. I'll deliver the messages. And they said, tell my parents that uh, we are not terrorists. We are not taking life of others just because we want to shed the blood of Goim. We want to save shedding the blood of our friends and our people in Israel. He said at a certain stage, when it was very late, let's say the prayer, Adon Olam. A prayer that Jews are saying before they go to bed. Since you are going to rest, we say Adon Olam. And Moshe Barzani said, no, let's sing it. They sat here in this prison and sang the prayer from deep within with great passion. My father told them, I want that the last seed that you be seen will be a loving brother and not a Foe. They tried to tell him that might not be the best idea. They had a plan to commit suicide and kill the British with the two grenades hidden in the oranges. But they couldn't tell the rabbi what they were going to do because a rabbi would not allow a Jew to commit suicide. 
They tried to convince my father to give up his intention to be with them in the last moment. They said, you know, that will be very hard for you to see this spectacle of hanging people. He said, I'll go there, I'll come back at dawn, because dawn was the time of the execution. He said he wasn't even able to prepare for bed when there was commotion in the prison. The British at one stage even suspected that he was the one who smuggled in the grenades. And he understood, along with the British, that they had changed their plans, hugged each other with one grenade between their hearts, and blew themselves up. We knew the story almost by heart, yes. I was at that time 17 years old, and it grew with me too. We really felt that they are martyrs, and their story, the story of their taking their, their lives, should be told to each and each generation in Israel. It's different from academic research. You want to transmit the experience and to pass on the experience from the people who lived it. Now it's the third and even fourth generation. It's very important to us that it will be told by these people because they heard it firsthand. He wanted to be sure that he wouldn't forget all the details. So he wrote for himself and for the generations to come.